Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the first new Hero class Thanatos, which is coming to sea, global, and EU servers by the end of this month. Thanatos can unleash lethal amounts of damage to all enemies in his path using his unique 4 skill combo while surviving with a short invincibility frame. And in this guide, we'll explore how to build a Thanatos character for PvE. We'll talk about which stats, skills, runes, gears, cards, and upgrades are needed to prepare you in advance before the hero class arrives. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, let's take a look at Thanatos' skills. Hero classes like Thanatos only have a single skill tree with a core passive skill that is upgraded via runes while the other skills are upgraded using the usual job points. Thanatos' core passive skill is called Dark Fate which has several effects. First is that it boosts Thanatos' Frenzy by 20 points every 5 seconds. Frenzy is needed to cast his sword form skills so you must maintain a high frenzy at all times to be able to complete his skill chain combo. The maximum frenzy points that can be obtained is 100 but it can increase to 150 at level 4 which means that you need at least 3 runes with activated second line. Each point of frenzy increases Sanatus' demi-human damage reduction by 0.3% at max level. The second effect of Dark Fate is that it boosts physical penetration by 15% at max skill level whenever you use a sword form skill. This buff lasts for 8 seconds and can stack up to 3 times so it's fairly easy to maintain 45% pen as long as you consistently hit your target. As for the third and last effect of Dark Fate, Form 1 Calamity will have a circular AoE range instead of just a single direction. This has a pretty huge range and can hit up to 10 enemies. In addition, all sword form skills will include an extra heavy roll attack after cast. This will significantly improve the DPS of the Natos since heavy roll has a huge attack multiplier. This effect will only be triggered at max level which means that it's necessary to have all 6 runes with activated second line if you want to reach the Natos' max damage potential. Next, let's take a look at Thanatos' sword form chain combo, which is the primary damaging skill of Thanatos. There are 4 sword form skills in total, and it changes automatically to the next phase, so you only need to press one skill for the entire combo. The first form deals physical damage to all enemies in front, and it has the lowest damage. As mentioned earlier, Calamity can become a circular AoE if Dark Fate is upgraded to level 7, hitting more enemies. The second form will make the Natus jump to a target area. After landing, it will deal physical damage to all enemies, will reduce their movement speed by 80%, and will clear all ground skills. The third form makes the Natus disappear for 1 second, which means he can neither attack nor be attacked. And afterwards, he appears and deals physical damage to enemies inside the area of the red circle, inflicting Nightmare status for 1 second. Nightmare is Thanatos' unique abnormal status that prevents the enemy from moving or attacking and will only awaken after receiving 2 attacks. When Nightmare is removed, it will dispel all friendly buffs on the enemy and can even reduce their SP with this S rune for the Nightmare debuff. And for the fourth and final form, the Nato teleports behind an enemy, dealing physical damage to all enemies in the path, removing all Abyss Mark layers, and restoring 10 Frenzy points for each layer removed. With this star rune, its damage can significantly increase if it only hits one unit. The damage calculation utilizes both physical and magic attack and is exponentially increased based on the layers of Abyss Mark on the target. Abyss Mark is a debuff attached on the target when hit with the first 3 phases of the combo. Thus, the damage will exponentially grow from Form 1 to Form 4 of the skill combo. Based on the damage formula, Form 4 will hit the hardest since at this point, you've already stacked 3 Abyss Marks on all enemies which will raise your damage by 8 times. Take note that you cannot benefit from the abyss marks attached by other Thanatos. 
The other attack skill of Thanatos is Heavy Roll, which deals physical damage to all enemies within a 2 by 8 meter range. As discussed earlier, an extra Heavy Roll attack will be automatically casted after using a Sword Form skill when Dark Fate is upgraded to max level. It has huge physical attack multiplier and its damage can increase from 0.1% to 1% for every frenzy point loss with this S rune. Next, Sanatas has 3 active buff skills and they are as follows. First is Dark Circle which restores 30 frenzy and resets the duration of all Abyss Mark layers on enemies within 10 meters. With this S rune, it can also be used to heal yourself for 1% to 20% of your max HP. Second, we have Heart of Steel, which consumes 35 Frenzy to gain 90% damage reduction and 15% abnormal status resist. This buff lasts for 5 seconds and can be increased to up to 8 seconds with the max value of this S rune. Although Donatos has no anti-fatal skill, he can spam Heart of Steel as long as Frenzy can be managed properly. It's best to use it at the start of every skill combo since it will reset Sword Form to Form 1 every after use. A full skill combo usually lasts for 6 seconds, so it's good to have at least 1 second additional duration for the S rune. And third, we have Demonic Frill, which is a buff that lasts for 30 seconds and has several effects. First is that it increases max HP by 30%, pen by 20%, and even ignore death by up to 30% with this star rune. Second is that it turns Thanatos' race into demon, so the enemy's demi-human damage reduction won't reduce the damage dealt by Thanatos. And third is that it grants Endure status, which is a must for melee classes to avoid flinching when attacked. Having its cooldown reduced by 40% will help achieve 100% uptime. Next, let's take a look at the other passive skills of Thanatos. First is Demon Sword Mastery, which has a 50% chance to completely block damage from enemies and boost magic attack by 10 points for every point of int. And second, we have Walking Alone at Night, which grants additional 30% physical damage and 30% movement speed when not riding a mount. If you only have a 25% move speed mount, then you'll walk faster when not mounted. The last two skills of the Nata, such as Nightmare and Sin Karma, are more useful in PvP since MVPs are immune to status effects. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, hero classes only gain attributes when nodes are activated and there are no nodes that modify the effects of skills, making it really straightforward for new players. As a simple guide, just focus on upgrading the nodes that grant Ignore Death, Attack Percent, Magic Attack Percent, Strength, Int, and Raw Physical and Magic Attack. For advanced runes, hero classes are heavily rune dependent due to the new mechanics of upgrading the core passive skill, where in the second line of all 3 star runes and 3 S runes should be activated to max the core passive. Thus, it's encouraged that you save enough runes to get the essential S and star runes. First, we have the Star Rune for Demonic Frill, which grants an additional 1% to 30% Ignore Death. Second is the Star Rune from Form 4 Terminate, which increases the damage of the fourth phase of the Sword Form skill combo by 1% to 30% if it only hits one target. Third is the S Rune for Heavy Roll, which boosts its damage by 0.1% to 1% for every frenzy point lost. Fourth is the S Rune for Dark Circle, which grants a healing effect equivalent to 1% to 20% of your max HP. Fifth is the S Rune for Heart of Steel, which increases its duration by 0.1 to 3 seconds. And last is the Star Rune for Nightmare, which is only useful in PvP since it reduces the SP of targets inflicted by Nightmare status. As for Attribute Runes, just focus on the following for improving damage. Up next, let's take a look at the important stats to upgrade. For attribute point distribution, max out both strength and int since these are the principal sources of attack and magic attack which are both essential in increasing the sword form skill combo damage. Then just put the remaining points on vit for survivability. However, you may also allocate your stat points differently if you'll be using any of these garment cards. 
if you'll be using a Vagabond Wolf Star card or Chucky Tree Star card, then max out strength to boost your attack percent. For Mastering Star card users, you can max out luck to increase physical damage. And lastly, there will be a new MVP card that will be added in a future update called Zenobia card which will boost skill damage by 6% and an additional 0.1% for every 12 points of strength, dex, and int. I think this card will be the best in slot for Thanatos. As for damage multipliers, prioritize increasing attack percent, magic attack percent, melee physical damage, physical penetration, ignore death, skill damage, damage to MVP, and damage to large size. As a general rule for clearing the current late game instances, you will need around 200% ignore death, 80% pen, 50% skill damage, and 50% elemental damage. Up next, let's dive into the gears, cards, and other upgrades. First for weapon, the best in slot is a plus 15 Sword of Rhaenyr, enchanted with morale or sharp blade with high PDI, and inlaid with Drake Star Card and or Minora Star Card to activate the inside effect of Minora's card from the handbook. The materials for crafting and synthesizing this new weapon are as follows. For offhand, you may either get a Voodoo Blade with 30% Ignore Death or Dragon Bone Shield with 18% Physical Damage, Enchanted with Armor Breaking 4 or High BDI, and inlaid with Alistar Card. For armor, you can use either Horror Bones Battle Gear with 15% physical and magic damage or 20% damage to large, or a Dream Eater's Disguise with 20% elemental damage, especially against MVPs with high elemental reduction such as in Oracle Elite 9 and Legend Instances. Your armor should be enchanted with Morale or High PDI and inlaid with Poitata Star card. For Garment, the best in slot is Brave Warrior's Pauldron with 12% skill damage, enchanted with high PDI, and inlaid with Zenobia card or any of these cards. For Foot Gear, it's recommended to use the Boots of Balance with 6% physical damage, enchanted with high PDI, and inlaid with Edgar Star card. For Accessories, you may use any of these depending on the stat you are lacking. Pendant of Fusion for attack percent and physical damage, Void Crystal for Ignore Death and Physical Damage, or Floral Hair Clip for a Magic Attack Percent. Both accessories should be enchanted with Sharp Blade 4 and High PDI, and inlaid with any of the following cards. For Headwear, there will be a new Headwear Blueprint dropped by Zenobia and Void Realm that gives plus 2% skill damage and additional 1% skill damage for every refinement level. There's also a new headwear card which grants plus 15% damage to MVP and mini monster. This will become available on the return of the Wataru event. These are my top options for each slot. As for other upgrades, Prioritize the following guild buffs Oracle Mirror Extract and Ancient Relic. Also, don't forget to approve your handbook and get multi jobs. Finally, let's take a look at the battle setup for using Thanatos in boss hunting and clearing instances. What's good about hero classes is that they only have 6 active skills which can all fit in a single skill bar. Important skills for PvE are Sword Form, Demonic Frill, Dark Circle, and Heart of Steel. I think Heavy Roll can be left out of the manual skill bar since it is already automatically casted with max level Dark Fate core skill. As for the auto skill slot, you may opt to put Form 1 Calamity for continuous casting of the skill combo or just manually cast it for better targeting. Before starting, use the following consumables which can help boost your damage. Then cast Demonic Frill before starting the skill combo. Usually completing the skill combo continuously on a target can easily maintain your frenzy. But if you're having trouble managing your Frenzy, then cast Dark Circle after finishing the combo to restore 30 Frenzy. You can also cast Heart of Steel and Dark Circle for damage reduction and healing.
So that's it for my Thanatos build guide for PvE. I hope this video has helped you in your journey in the world of Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any question or suggestion. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.